Hello everyone, it's Shannon here at Ramsey County's Tamarack Nature Center and I'm here today with Pablo the Painted Turtle. He is one of our animal ambassadors here at Tamarack. Now I say animal ambassador, he's not a pet, he is an educational animal that we use specifically to teach people about native Minnesota turtles. Now some of you might be wondering, can I have a turtle as a pet? Is that an okay thing? Well, you can keep a turtle as a pet. If you would like a turtle as a pet, you need to make sure that you purchase it from a reputable pet store and you need to be sure that that animal has not been removed from the wild. You should probably know that turtles aren't as easy of a pet as you might think. Uh, we gotta keep this guy in a pretty large tank with quite a bit of water that needs to be cleaned on a regular basis and he is a great ambassador for us to hear, have here at the Nature Center, but um, he can be a lot of work. So keep that in mind before running out to get a pet turtle. Uh, they live for 20 to 30 years, so it's a big commitment. But we have him here at the Nature Center to help teach you all about painted turtles. This is one of Minnesota's most common turtles and the most common turtle here at Tamarack. If you go down to Tamarack Lake on a sunny day, you will see them out basking in the sun. Basking. What is basking? What does that mean? Well, that is how these guys warm themselves up. They will come out in the sunshine and the sun's rays will shine down on them and warm them up and bring their body temperature up. Because they are ectothermic or what some people call cold blooded, their body temperature is whatever the air temperature is around them. And that is why you see them out basking in the sun all the time. That is how they warm up. Now this little guy is called the painted turtle because of his coloring. You can see he's a little bit orange on the bottom and um, it looks like somebody painted him with a paintbrush so that is our painted turtle you see them in a lot of ponds around here in Minnesota uh, this this particular turtle is a male we know that because of the shape of his play straw and it's kind of concave and these really long claws that he has on his front feet and uh, the males actually use those long claws to when they find a mate they kind of give their mate a little massage and that's how one of the ways that they use their claws claws are also very useful for digging down in the mud late in the fall when they need to hibernate because they hibernate down in the mud at the bottom of the pond but this time of year they're all coming out of hibernation they have been out of hibernation for a while now and they've been basking and warming themselves up and feeding their hungry little tummies. They have been empty all winter. So out in the wild, they might be eating small insects and small fish, maybe some of the plants that we find in the pond. Our turtle eats all sorts of things. We do feed him live animals. He eats goldfish. He will eat crickets. Sometimes he likes to eat worms or cockroaches, and we also feed him turtle pellets sometimes. So I'm gonna put him back in his little tank here and see if we can get him to eat some food. I have some food back here. I'm gonna first try some pellets and see what he does with a pellet. Okay, so our turtle pellets are made from lots of things that turtles like to eat. They're fish meal and algae and shrimp things and all sorts of stuff like that and they taste really good to turtles we just drop them in there and they float and once he sees them okay he thinks there's food on the bottom of the tank there hey buddy there he goes now he doesn't have teeth he's got a beak and you can see he can chomp those pellets in half with his beak you might notice that he pulls his head back underwater in order to swallow. The water pressure helps him swallow. Um, oh, he missed. And so he'll just grab those pellets and swallow them down. Pellets are one of the things he eats. I have another food here for him today. I have fish. I have some little goldfish here. Yes, it is kind of sad to feed him goldfish. I do really love goldfish but I really love Pablo and Pablo really loves goldfish. So I am going to put a fish in here and see what he does with it. Oh, 
he's seen it. Now out in the wild, he wouldn't be eating goldfish. Obviously we don't have goldfish in the pond. We have minnows in the pond. So he would be eating little minnows, small water bugs, and maybe some small plants that he finds in the pond. And those would be his main food sources when, if he was a turtle that lived out here in our lake. Now, while the pond is very important to the turtles and very important for their habitat, they actually need two kinds of habitats. They need the pond, and they also need some nice sandy uplands with some nice loose soil that they can use to dig their nests. So, when they, this time of year, after they've warmed up and they've been feeding, they will, the, the females will come out of the pond and travel to places like maybe your garden. I've heard of people having turtles come into their gardens. That soil that you till up in your garden is good soft soil for a turtle to build a nest. And so they need to get from the pond to some place where they can lay eggs. And that's one of the hardships of being a turtle because people like to build houses around our ponds and our lakes and they frequently have to cross roads and other busy human places to get to where they need to make their nests. So you can keep your eyes peeled this time of year for those turtles moving around looking for nesting sites and in a little bit I'm going to show you how you can help a turtle to get across busy places like sidewalks and roads to a safe nesting place. Our other turtle ambassador is Scoots. He has a very cute name but I bet it's spelled differently than what you're thinking. S-C-U-T-E-S, -E scoots. A scoot is a term for the little divisions on a turtle's shell. So each of these plates here is called a scoot. Now, since turtles are a reptile, they actually shed, similar to snakes. Where a snake will shed its whole skin, the turtle just sheds the scoots. So as their shell grows and um, it, as it gets bigger, these little plates will peel off and we'll find them in his tank and they'll just peel right off. They kind of look like little fingernails when they peel off, but that is a characteristic that a lot of people don't know about turtles. They actually shed pieces of their shell. Anything else you notice about his shell that might be different from Pablo? Yep, it's much more domed than Pablo's shell. Pablo's shell is a little flatter. This turtle is frequently referred to as a semi-aquatic turtle, whereas painted turtles are aquatic. They spend a ton of time in the water. Blanding's turtles actually like to spend a lot of time in wet, marshy areas and muddy spots. So their shell is a little bit different size. The other cool thing about his shell is the fact that it is hinged. So underneath on his place drawn here, there's a little hinge right here. I can kind of move it a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. But what he can do is when he pulls inside to protect his very vulnerable head, he, the shell will actually kind of snap shut over his head. So you can see, uh, if I can get him to cooperate here, he can kind of fold his feet in, see how his feet go in? And his head pulls in too. I don't know if I'll be able to get him to do it. There he goes. Look at that. So he can pull, he can pull in further than that. And then his shell will snap shut and that protects his really vulnerable head. The other interesting thing about Blanding's turtles is that they are threatened here in Minnesota. Threatened. What does threatened mean? Well, threatened refers to their population numbers. Their population numbers are quite low right now. And so they are a protected species. Why do you think their populations would be in trouble right now? A lot of it has to do with habitat. A lot of their habitat is fragmented. They also need two types of habitats. They need their wetland habitat and they also need an upland habitat for nesting. This time of year, the females are busy trying to find a place to nest and they will travel up to a mile away from their wetland to find a good upland nesting area. There's a lot of danger between the wetland and a mile away. Houses, cars, bicycles, all sorts of things that would cause this animal danger. So one of the reasons they are threatened is because of habitat loss and what we call fragmentation. There's a lot of stuff in between the natural areas where they need to go. 
The other problem is that it takes them 12 to 15 years to reach maturity and be able to lay eggs. So a Blanding's turtle has to be able to survive for at least 12 years before they can even lay a single egg. And then females only lay one nest a year and usually maybe 10 to 25 eggs in a nest. So they don't breed quickly. So between the habitat loss and the slow breeding, then that causes problems for their populations. Now, because they are threatened, you cannot have a Blanding's turtle as a pet. It is illegal for them to be in pet stores or for people to have them in their homes. So why do we even have him? Good question. He was found in a pet store. And being that that is illegal, the DNR confiscated him. Because they didn't know where he came from, they couldn't release him back into the wild. Because there's a weird thing about turtles. They carry these strange bacteria, but different populations of turtles have different bacteria. So this turtle might carry bacteria A and be immune to bacteria B, but if we let him go in some random pond somewhere, those turtles might carry a bacteria that he's not immune to, or Worst case scenario, he would introduce bacteria A into a population that isn't immune to it and he could kill an entire turtle population. So we can't really release turtles back into the wild if we don't know exactly where they came from. So we were able to acquire a special permit to have him here at our facility to use him as an education ambassador to teach people about Blanding's turtles. Any other cool things you notice about him? The yellow chin, oh, now he's gonna hide. He has a bright yellow chin. That's very characteristic of Blanding turtles. He's got really big webbed feet and this giant tail. Cool characteristics. Now I mentioned that this time of year they're out nesting. What can we do to help them be successful nesters? Because that's one of the problems is successful nesting. Well, if you see a turtle on a road, Blandings or otherwise, there are ways you can help them across. I'd like to keep a pair of gloves in my car, just a pair of leather work gloves in case I encounter a snapping turtle trying to cross the road. But in, in, with any turtle, you just need to pick them up properly as I'm holding him now, like you're eating a hamburger kind of, just hold him like that. And the most important thing is if you're helping a turtle cross a road or a sidewalk, move that turtle in the direction she is going. She knows where she wants to go. She's either looking for her nest or she's trying to get back to the pond. And if you don't move her in the right direction, she's just gonna turn around and go back. So if they're trying to cross the road, move them across the road, take them to the other side, pick them up. So as he's walking, grab them on either side, pick them up, move them across the road, and then put them back down again. And they will go where they need to go. If you know of a turtle nest, if there's one in your yard or garden, you can put some uh, like chicken wire across the top of it to keep out raccoons and skunks and other things that like to eat eggs. That will help that nest reach maturity and hatch. A lot of turtles die before they even hatch or they die as nestlings coming out because things like to eat them. So those are two things we can do to help our turtle populations survive a little bit better. Thanks for joining us today. Keep your eyes on the Facebook page for more upcoming cool things.